All right, so say we have run our auto model in Rapid Miner, and here you can see we have some results from running a test on the lemonade data with generalized linear model, decision tree, support vector machine. So we can see we've got a mean squared error there, uh, run times for the various uh, models, and we've got different types of errors that you can uh, evaluate. Uh, in the drop down here. We can also scroll down in the results and we can see here's the data. Here are the correlation weights for both the original features and any generated features that you uh, uh, had the auto model create for you. And then a correlation matrix that you can then use for additional analysis maybe in your statistical package of choice. All right, so that's kind of the overview and we can see here the decision tree seems to have a uh, smaller root mean squared error, which is good. It also has very quick runtime, which is also good. Uh, decision trees, as we know, are simple to explain and it wins all the awards here on the model comparison table. All right. So we can see the three models we created. We can look at the model, uh, see some information about the model, the weights, uh, the simulator, uh, performance, uh, again with the absolute error, relative error, squared error, and correlation. Uh, we can see information about the feature sets that were created. We can see the predicted values versus the actual values. And we can see the chart and how we've got a straight line prediction here. Uh, looks like a little bit of a curve to the actual data. So that you know gives us some insight into the actual process itself. Uh, obviously, sales can't necessarily go on a pure straight line. There's going to be some peak demand that you're not going to, or maybe even peak supply, that you're not going to be able to go above and beyond uh, your little lemonade stand, maybe without building another or create an, creating another uh, lemonade stand to uh, increase your output. All right, same thing with the decision tree. We can see the model that was created, the weights, uh, our predictions chart as well support vector we've got the predictions chart as well predictions versus predicted versus actual values and then the model itself all right so what we want to do now is if we want to take a look at the actual process that generated that model in rapid miner we just click open process here we can see auto model we open the process and it takes us over to the design tab and we can see the process that was created by auto model it's got some information on uh, results uh, you can see all of the operators have uh, some information text describing what each step does and you can see it generates a relatively complicated model a lot of it is just sort of a data cleanup uh, the ETL process here we also had the model do uh, holdout data, sampling and holdout data so that we could uh, work our way through the simulation and uh, test it uh, that way. Uh, and then it calculated performance on the holdout data. So, and so I can do a file, export the process, and I will save it to, oh, let's just say I'm going to save it to my downloads folder. And I will call it uh, linear model lemonade or even lemonade linear model save it and then I could go back to auto model and review my next model so I can go to the decision tree and again open the process take a look at it and I can see here I've got my retrieved data pre-processing so a lot of the ETL type stuff ordering the attributes filtering etc and then I have my decision tree process that I can work my way through and I'll save that the same way I'll export it uh, again to my downloads folder I'll call it lemonade decision tree model and save it 
And then finally I can go back to my auto model, say, okay, how did that support vector machine work? I go there, open the process. Now I've got my support vector machine. Again, all of these are set up more or less the same way where you've got the ETL activities at the beginning, what kind of data prep was prepared, and then you uh, break the data out, you split it up into your holdout and uh, sampling data, test your uh, model, create your, uh, uh, use the appropriate operators to create the models, and then test and score uh, based on what you um, uh, had for holdout data. All right, so I'll go ahead and export that as well and we'll call that lemonade support vector machine model and save it and just like that I now have if I go to my downloads folder let's say I can see my Lemonade SVM model, decision tree model, and linear model sitting here. Uh, and each of them is uh, around 200K in size. So the RMP files are pretty reasonably sized for uh, uploading, emailing, etc. And there you have it. Okay.